Uh, I suppose it all, the, it all started about 18 years ago in the UK when my partner for many years uh, convinced me that uh, we should be on a more healthy diet and uh, that eventually led to becoming vegetarians and then that eventually led to becoming uh, eating more organic food and then I just really wanted to know more about it, uh, what it entailed eating organic food, what was the, uh, the contents of it and that really opened my mind up and that's as I say about 18 years ago that I became aware of um, certainly the organic food that was around and the people who were growing it and I started on my organic adventure about 18 years ago. Um, I suppose really the, uh, when I first started to uh, make people aware and encourage people it was with my grown up children and of course having many years uh, um, fed them what I thought was healthy fruit and veg all of a sudden I'm telling them that they'll stop eating that particular fruit and veg and go down the organic road and you know my kids of a certain age grown up thought yeah what's happened to dad you know he's really flipped his lid now blah 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 but anyway so um, once I'd found out and traveled and visited organic growers in different parts of the world then I wanted to tell people where what I'd found my research my common sense and started volunteering my time in the schools initially apart from telling everybody I met um, about this all organic food, literally everybody and it must have been a real bore I suppose at the time uh, but then started volunteering my time in the schools and by this time I'd moved to Vancouver Island in uh, beautiful British Columbia in Canada and uh, so from that um, then started putting presentations together and really then became officially an organic educator um, talking to basically whoever would listen from nursery school kids right through to a university and now the end product in some of these seeds are now called terminator seeds which uh, are just running rampant and what happens is a grower will buy the seeds off Monsanto or Japont off this company and what happens then they, they grow into plants and the farmer is not allowed to save any of those seeds that would come naturally from that plant so you may sell some, you may save some, but they're not allowed to do that. They're under license and a strict contract, a legalized contract, to then buy the next seeds from these companies. And so it goes on. So what they're doing, they're controlling the growth of food because food starts off as a seed. What were the health consequences of, uh, and maybe in the long run, of, of eating GMO food? Okay, um, again, there is very, very little research on either side of that to show that there would indeed be, in all honesty, a great health risk um, involved. But because of the uncertainty, because of the lack of um, knowledge that is coming out of these companies from the testing, from the growing, there's this great, huge uncertainty surrounding it. And I think that alone then should tell us that, you know, um, we should be very aware of it. For instance, in our supermarket shelves, uh, on the process items, there can be up to 80% of those process items with genetically engineered food within them um, and the process therein. And that alone, because again, you know, and I'm not hedging my bets because the, the information is very, very, uh, the information is very, very limited, very restricted, and uh, so the companies involved just really don't want to release that information. So uh, I, unfortunately, I can't give you any detail on that all apart from the uncertainty of it as well. <laughs> Most of my life is now spent, and has been for a number of years, spent visiting schools um, from nurseries up to universities and basically just doing that, making them aware of how, as a general rule, the conventional food is grown, where it is grown, um, generally miles and miles away, many thousands of miles away from where that person is living, and grown with the chemicals, the pesticide, etc. And therefore then take them down that path and then we then open the minds to organic food and we brainstorm that. Um, we have lots of questions, lots of debates on it. And I believe therefore children especially should be made aware of that there is food grown out there without these chemicals. We do know it as organic food. And my belief, my research and more and more people are becoming aware and, and uh, perception and or a belief in it that it is more healthy for you. And again it comes back to the point that you know, when we are growing food without these chemicals, without these poisons, to me, logic and common sense shows that it should be more, and it should be more health friendly. It should end up being more health friendly, and I generally believe that. So, what I do, I make the children aware of this, and then what I say to them, it's about three things: it's about awareness, education, and choice. And depending on the age of the children, if they are of a young age, I say, you know, it's I'm making now aware of this scenario, this situation about organic food. I'm educating about you. But at the end of the day, it's your parents' choice whether they buy it 
and feed you it or whether they still buy conventional food. So it really 